own female by herself. Now, who are you? Because the very black nose, hold on, let's just get into position here. I don't know who this lioness is, but she is sitting in the shade all by herself. Are you one of the Inkahuma girls or are you one of the Styx girls? She seems quite nervous. Look at her, how she's got her posture. Or are you from the Manyaleti? Who are you and what are you? It's not a lioness that looks very comfortable with our presence. Look how she's got her head cowering down, almost as if to lower her position. Now, I don't know this lioness. I'm trying to see if it's one of the Inkahuma females, but I don't know her well. Looks like a few wounds on her back as well. Who are you, girl, and where have you come from? Now, I know a lot of you know this incredibly well, so I'm hoping that some of you will be able to maybe get a spot pattern or something. You see, she's hiding almost from us. She's still watching us through the grass, which is uncharacteristic of our lions. Is there another lion in there? There looks like there might be a cub in there as well. Or is that just her back leg? They're difficult to see. Looks like almost something to the right also lying there. You see there, there's another little white tummy. Yes, there's, is there two? There looks like a, or is that just her back leg? Very difficult to make out. No, it just looks like her back leg that's stretched out. There was only tracks for one that I could see, but she looks as though she's got a few nasty wounds on her. So I wonder if she's maybe in a quite bad condition. I'm not sure. Well, this is an interesting little mystery that's come out. Now, I know a lot of you are concerned that she's hurt. Now, interestingly enough, with the tracks that we were seeing, there was no drag of her feet anywhere there. So I'm not sure if maybe she is hurt. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I don't know who this is. I don't know if Ali had all five females with the Inkahuma Pride this morning. So I don't know if all five were there or not or what's going on. But there's definitely a lioness I don't recognize. So she had all five females. This lioness has come from the northwest. So I wonder, maybe it's part of the Torchwood Pride. Maybe it's one of the Styx girls. It's got a very nose on her. So I don't know this lion. And I'm not sure if she's in great condition or not. Donna, are you wondering if it's unusual to see a lioness on her own? So Donna, it could be. Uh, well, it is unusual to see a lioness on her own. So there she's popped her head up and she's now going flat. So she's getting more comfortable with our presence. Definitely only her here. So it's just the one lioness that we've got here. Her tummy looks a bit sucked in. She doesn't look as though she's kind of had a good meal recently. She's breathing quite rapidly, which is fine because she is going to be warm. It is a warm afternoon. But it is strange to have a single lioness and particularly where we are. This is not an area that the Styx Pride regularly uses. Um, a member of the Torchwoods that has followed the buffalo this way or a member of a pride out of the Manuleti that has followed the buffalo this way but it's most certainly just one lioness and I have no idea. Crystal, you say maybe a Talamati female? <laughs> Possible. I have no idea. I don't know. I mean the Talamatis do get seen about around Jakarna Dam which is just north of Sydney so maybe. Who knows? I'm not sure at all, but I will tell you that she didn't at first really like our presence. She kind of was cowering down, but now she's kind of relaxed. So it's interesting, and I would like to see her walking. The tracks dictate that she walked just fine, and so, I mean, maybe she's not doing well. I don't know. She could definitely do with a meal, though. She's got a little kind of sucked-in tummy there, so it definitely seems as though she could... You can see her and that tummy is in a little bit. No lactating marks, so it's not like it's a female that's off on her own because she's got cubs and has lost touch with her pride and is trying to find them. So who are you, girl, and where do you come from? Hmm. Interesting. This is the best thing about Safari is that you just don't know what's going on at all. But she is breathing very rapidly. What's wrong, girl? Have you just smelt something? I don't know who you are, but definitely a lot of cuts and scrapes around the shoulders and neck. So she's had a bit of a manhandling by somebody. But anyway, while we try and I'm going to try to get a better shot of her face and try and work out who she is. And while we do that, let's send you back across to Ali 
That buffalo's look down. Well, she is on the move, and she's very ginger when she's walking. She's walking with extreme comfort, but I mean, I suppose she's ambling, but she's not in great condition. She's got lots of wounds on her. She's got quite skinny, which I would expect from a female on her own. Life is tough if you've had a few wounds and you're on your by yourself. So I don't know who she is or where she comes from. I don't reckon, but she does have the more the kind of sticks look to her in terms of a very dark black nose. And she, you can see she's skinny. I mean, she's in need of a good meal. It's a pity she didn't find that Impala this morning. But there she goes. She's kind of just walking through. She's not emaciated to the point where she's going to flop over and die any second. She's going to be in good enough condition to probably try and find food and to if she just gets one good meal like a buffalo she'll be absolutely fine now Jean you want to know if lions will remove themselves from the pride to die no I mean it's a bit of a fabrication a lot of the time people will say that lionesses do that what is as they get older and weaker so they get it's harder for them to keep up and the females that are still in the pride that have cubs they have to keep moving they have to keep looking for food in order to sustain their own offspring and so they often then leave these females behind and older females then get into a situation where unfortunately for them they are behind and go off on their own now this female while she is not young she's definitely not a young girl because her teeth are quite well worn already they're not i mean they're not pebbles yet but they are worn they're not as sharp as a and healthy as a young lion so i would say that she's the, but she's not ancient so she's not a lioness that should be leaving the pride because she's too old and cannot actually keep up so her right shoulder does look a bit odd doesn't it Fergus so Fergus commenting that her right shoulder looks a bit beaten up but she definitely has some serious bite wounds over her back um, I don't know if maybe the Nkuhuma pride is to blame for this maybe the Birmingham boys who knows Maybe she's a Styx lioness, I don't know. I have no idea what the Styx are looking like at the moment and whether or not they are okay. But there's no sign of mange on her or anything like that. So, I mean, the Styx, I suppose, could be better by now. Angie, you say it looks to you like one of the older Torchwood females. Well, Angie, I suppose that would make sense because the Torchwood Pride has been seen a lot on Buffalo lately, hunting buffalo herds. And we know that this seems like the same herd keeps kind of coming out of the woodwork. And the fact is, is she's on the buffalo track. She's walking exactly where the buffalo walked this morning. So maybe it is one of the older lionesses. I don't know the Torchwood Pride at all. So... It would be very difficult for me to confirm or deny that she's a tortured female, but I wouldn't surprise me at all. They have been on Buffalo's Hook regularly over the last two months. There's almost daily updates on them, so it wouldn't surprise me at all. She's going to have to be so careful, though, because she is walking straight into the middle of the Inkahumas territory. The Inkahumas, from where we are now, are straight east. I mean, it's, it's still a long way. It would be about a 25, 30-minute walk if she walked at this pace. But you never know, the night brings a lot of different things and if they come across her at night or the scent of her, they will track her down. Dunna no, if, they, if she meets up with the pride, the pride will most certainly kill her. So they will, tr if they don't, I mean, they'll try and chase her, but an interaction with five adult females that have cubs in an area and the big Birmingham boys who will get confused in this whole thing, the likelihood of her coming out of this unscathed would be very, 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 very remote. In fact, I would think that she in all likelihood would probably end up in a very bad way if she came across the not dead. So it's not a place that she wants to be. Striding into where the Inkuhumas are dominant is on your own is not a good idea. I mean, the sticks even kind of leave the Nkuhumas alone. Let's see, she stopped there and she's looking at us, so let's see. Maybe this will be a good opportunity for anybody that wants to try and get an idea of her, or just her right profile, is maybe now is the good time. I know there's a branch in the way, but there's definite puncture wounds on her shoulders, so she's had a fight with somebody at some point. Shame, girl, but you can see, look how yellow the teeth are, they're blunted. It's an older individual, but not an ancient individual, so this is not a I would say I would put her 11 12 years old somewhere there 
which is an oldish lioness. I mean, that's they can get older, but it's a fairly old girl. Oh, shame, girl. It's never nice when you get to see animals like this, when they're a little injured in their pride systems, particularly for lions, because obviously lions are socially very kind of bonded. And when you see a lioness, that's, you can see is visibly not in her top sh sort of state and, and not with any others. And it's always hard to watch. You know, you sometimes see prides and they look a little skinny and you know at least as a pride unit, the chances are that they'll find they need in order to survive and they'll they'll kind of figure it out but a lioness like this on her own if she doesn't find food she's just going to get into a weaker and weaker state and that's going to become a lot harder for her now what she stopped to see she's almost stopped to look girl what have you spotted it's almost like she spotted something that she wants to Show me and you say it looks like she's got a bone sticking out of her right shoulder. So, she definitely has got swelling there. I don't know if it's a bone sticking out. I'm not sure. I'm hoping she's going to stop at some point and we can actually get a good look. But you can see there was a massive wound on her between her shoulder blades that is healed. That's all granulated tissue that's come together. So much like the Inkahuma female's hip, that would have been a big gaping hole at some point. But it's all stitched together. I mean, it's her shoulder blades are moving pretty normally. Let's go look. We can get back onto that right side again. I will. I'm also trying to give her a bit of space. At the end of the day, I don't want to push her too hard, and certainly don't want to make her feel too uncomfortable at this stage. We want her just to kind of not push too much effort in during a hot period of the day like this. So just a little space every now and then is not bad. I wonder if the buffalo are not lying up of us because there's a big open clearing coming up and buffalo often like to lie in those places so let's have a look quickly no she's just kind of looking down that area shame girl who are you like i say never nice when that's not in its fine fettle and so I always kind of get a bit sad when I see any animal that's a little bit kind of downtrodden, if you want to call it that way, or just having a hard time in life. It's always tough. But anyway, let's see if we can try and get a better view of her one more time, just so we can try and maybe some sort of ID of who she is. She should pop out. Oh, no, she's now turning and going. Hold on. So I'm just trying... Right, um, sorry, because I'll have a good shot of her in two seconds. So let's just quickly get around this bush and then we'll be able to see her nicely pretty much straight towards us, which is going to be good. So here we go. She's right on the other side of this little drainage section. And there we go. She's going to look straight at us. Oh, Fergus, let me go forward a bit for you. So she's going to lie down there. Okay, cool. So she's lying down at least. We can at least see her face quite nicely. That'll be a good indicator for anybody that has any photos of the tour or telemartis or anything like that to have a little spot comparison and see if maybe we can figure out who exactly she is and what's going on with her and why she's here all by herself intriguing nature never stops delivering interesting and amazing things for us to see and as much as it's tough to find this like this it's also quite interesting in terms of the dynamics if it's not like we don't have enough dynamics with the leopards we now have a bit of a lion drama to follow as well right well while we sit here with this lioness and we figure out try figure out who exactly she is where exactly she's come from let's send you back across to Ali and I well she's settled a little bit now the light is very harsh and she's lying in the shadow so it's a bit difficult but at least we've got a nice front view of her with the kind of side of both well both her side profiles that we can work with so hopefully we can work out who she is i don't know her at all i mean i've looked at her now nicely through binoculars and i'm not sure who she is she doesn't look like this she doesn't obviously is not any of the inkumas so torchwood or talamati must be one of those two unless it's a random lioness from one of the other prides that hang around she's certainly not a small lioness if she bulked up and she put on some weight she'd be a really nice sized girl she's got a big head and she seems as though she's quite bulky in terms of her skeleton structure to add a bit of muscle mass onto her so interested to know who she is and where she's come from but you know these are the mysteries of life and it's part of what's so nice about being in an open system 
in the Kruger National Park area is that you get into these things where you, you don't know what you're going to get. All of a sudden a new lion is around, all of a sudden there's a new leopard around, and we've certainly seen that over the last few years. Almost like the new year has come, and since the new year it's just been change after change and difference after difference and new characters and all kinds of different things happening. So it's been very interesting watching what's going on. Now you can see a really nice shot there that Fergie is showing you of her teeth, and I was saying that her teeth are quite yellowed which is an, often an indication of an older individual. Also that right canine is chipped and broken and the, the left canine that she's very rounded. And so I don't think she's maybe as old as I said. 12 is maybe a little old. I would go for a 10, 11 year old line. Maybe 10 years old is probably what I would go for. But still very cool to see. How's that for a cool shot with the wind and the grass blowing in front? Well done, Fergus. That's very nice. Beautiful lioness though. She's got beautiful big ears. So she's a little different looking to what we see from the lionesses of the Nkuhumu pride. Also what's interesting with her, and well, just, you know, obviously she's been following a lot of leopards recently. It's, you forget how big lions are, and you have a situation where, you know, you see, see these guys and you just realize just how much larger lions are than what you see with leopards. It's incredible, actually. Their head size is quite astounding. Now, Kirst, if you can just repeat the name for me. Sorry, I forgot the name there. Blue Cozzy, you're wondering what the bite force is for a lion. So the bite force is around 600 PS, which is, I mean, it's, it's serious, but it's not nearly as serious as some of the other predators we have in Africa. So crocodile, hyena, far more bite force than what a lioness has got, but still a, a, a decent amount, that's for sure. And so Kirsty is telling me that a hyena is 1,100 psi. If you want to get a comparison, double the bite force of a lioness or a lion, which is quite something. It just goes to show you how strong hyenas are and why everybody avoids them. Oh, look at that! Look at her eyes, just looking up, and her ears. Hello, girl. You've got big ears like Tumba. Very cool. She's. A, I actually quite like her. She's got a bit of character to her. Maybe it's she's endearing because she's a little bit. Now, Kirsty, you say that a Nile crocodile is 5,000. It's ridiculous. So almost 10 times, well not almost, I mean like 8 times the bite force of a lion. It's absolutely astonishing how much power is in a crocodile's jaws. And what amazes me with that is that there's zero going the other way. So opening their mouth, they've got nothing that they can kind of, they just kind of open and if you put your two fingers there and, and close it, they don't actually have the power to open it. It's all in closing not in opening. It's pretty incredible to think that. What she was watching, was there a bird of prey that flew over? I don't see any eagles or vultures or anything like that that's come over. I wonder if she was maybe attracted to the vultures. Oh, there are a lot of vultures actually coming. There they all are. Well done. Well spotted, Ferg. So there's a few vultures in the blue sky. They look like little black dots, which are tough to track, especially if they're going to fly into the sun. Don't blind yourself there, Ferg, because the sun is coming fairly shortly. But there goes some vultures. Now, I wonder where they're off to. But that's what she's watching, is she's watching those vultures that are flying in the distance. Now that looks like it could be a hooded vulture. Very difficult because it's miles away to make out what it is, but it's got the right shape. Hooded vultures have those kind of diamond shapes, tails, and also it doesn't have too much of a featherless head. Ali, you're wondering if vultures have tiny teeth? No. So they've got a very sharp beak that is hooked on the end that is able to get into meat and then edge and that's how they're able to just break off little chunks now what you will see with vultures is that they all have different shape beaks so you'll have the white back vultures like we saw in the cape vultures that were predominantly on that carcass this morning big heavy set robust beak that gets huge chunks out and then you'll have little hooded vultures that will have tiny thin beaks and the egyptian vultures thing and they can get into all the little nooks and crannies and pull off all the little pieces right close to the bone so no little teeth they don't have teeth like uh, any of the mammals do but they do have these very sharp beaks with these little hooked points that are able to dig in and then they're able to cut little pieces off right now i do need to let rexon know that i have found this line exactly we are because he is asking me so i do apologize about using the radio shortly it will be very quick i just need to let him know where we are um, Rex, if you come Rebecca's Road, we're just south of Rebecca's Road now, going towards the old hyena den, um, to the east of that open area. So, there we go, so Rex will... 
make his way here as well and join us. Now, Rex and Mike know this lioness. It's actually going to be really nice for Rex to come here because Rex knows the Torchwood Pride quite well. He knows the Talamartis quite well. So he might be able to point us in the right direction as to who she is. Either way, interesting that she is where she is and how far she's come. I was hoping that maybe the buffalo was somewhere here. Just from a point of view that I know, you know, it's obviously never nice to watch a hunt take place and, and a kill, but a baby buffalo for her would do the world of good. And, and you never know when you follow a herd like that, a number of females are pregnant. If they've given birth during the course of the day, often they stash their calves as when they go for water and it opens up an opportunity for her to then maybe grab a calf, which it would be vitally important just for her to get good condition. The reason she's probably looking the way she is, she seems to have been, had some serious wounds on her. That means that her body would have been utilizing a lot of nutrients and it really would have been tough for her at one point. And so she's probably struggled to keep up with the pride, hasn't fed very well, and so she's lost a bit of condition, but a few good meals and she'll certainly be back to normal. I've seen many lions look far worse than her and come back and look absolutely amazing. In fact, the Kumas have all looked a bit scraggly at some point and then they come back. So... Mac, if you were wondering if this lion got bitten by a snake, what signs would be there that it was bitten by a snake? Depends on the snake, Mac. So obviously snakes out here have different types of venom. Um, most of them, well, in fact, all of them have some sort of a cocktail, but they have predominant types of venom. So if you, uh, the puff adder, it's mostly a cytotoxic venom. So if it was bitten by a puff adder, you would get an area where there would be massive swelling. It would be very black and there would be a massive amount of necrosis that would happen and, and cause uh, a huge part of their tissue to, to deteriorate and, and that would be a big problem. And often those bites are around the neck and chest area. Hello, girl. Are you going to walk right past us? You are indeed. It's quite something being eye level with us for sure. Now she is moving and she's going to go right past where we are. And she's got a nasty tail gash. Is that true as well, Ferg? Yes, she does. Just underneath her tail there, little gash as well. So if it was a puff adder, it would be that. Uh, Mumba is more a um, neurotoxin, so she would show signs of breathing, and she would struggle with those kind of things. And then if it was something like a um, cobra, well, they've got quite a mixed venom, so she could have a situation where she would be a little bit of everything so difficulty breathing um, and then also a bit of necrosis at the bite site as well so it depends as to what symptoms she would show now I'm going to try and just get up onto this other side of this drainage because I know it's not easy to follow her through here I've once followed Tingana and Shadow in here and it's really not easy you've got to kind of stay on top of things quite quickly so while I try and keep up with her let's send you back across to Ali and find out where she is and but for us this afternoon. Well, before we get into that, you might hear quickly. She's managed to find herself a tortoise. She just collapsed on it and just started crunching it. So I don't know if it was a baby tortoise, but it's certainly just been absolutely hammered, whatever it was. Did you just finish that in one foul swoop? No, I think she's still got some of it. Can you hear the crunching of the shell? So she's definitely got a little tortoise there, which is how she's going to survive for now. She's going to grab all kinds of things like that, but that poor tortoise just got mowed down. Shame. Wrong place at the wrong time, I think, for this poor little thing. Ferg, I'm going to try and get us round quickly so we can see better than what we can see now because I can't really see what kind of tortoise it is or what's going on. She's very conveniently right on the old hyena den road, which makes life a little bit easy. Now, Kirsty, I'm pretty sure it's not Gregory, but it could be Gregory's babies. Too soon? Sorry, Kirst. I know as a as a new mother, what are you? Mother, grandmother, grandmother, first? What are you two? What are you two, Gregory? You're the fun aunt. Oh, okay. I see. Well, as the fun aunt, uh, maybe that was a bit soon to be making light of Gregory's. Hold on, Ferg, sorry, I've got to get into low range here to get up this. Eggsy is the grandfather, and you don't know. Oh my goodness, it's all very complicated family, this, the Gregory story. But for those of you who don't know who Gregory is, Gregory is our 
camp tortoise that comes in every now and then and Kirsty and Eggsy have named it and it had little babies this year for the first time that we know about, which is very cool. Well, we think. I mean, we don't know for sure, but the little babies came from where Gregory lives. It seems like it is the case. Now, it's definitely a tortoise. It looks like a small leopard tortoise, so not Gregory. Cursed, you can breathe a sigh of relief. There we go. But at least it is a meal for this particular individual. Poor tortoise, just like I say, didn't even because she literally walked and just jumped on it and then started eating it. Shame, my girl. Interestingly enough, though, she went to the toilet just before this and she defecated. Now, any individual that has got no food in their stomach will not defecate a serious amount of dung like she did. So I wonder if she's just not going from tortoise to tortoise, scavenging a little bit, getting nutrients like that. And so while she is thin, she's still able to actually get some sort of food. But at least you've got a little meal. It's a start, girl. And we know that tortoises can be a good start. We've seen with Hosanna and Shongile, you know, they've all, to me, they all started on tortoises and kind of worked their way and they managed to sustain themselves on that. So it's not the worst thing to have. I suppose for a lioness, being the size she is, is a little bit bigger than a small young leopard. But you never know. I mean, it's at least nutrients at the end of the day and very little energy expended to get some of that nutrients. And it certainly will starve off the pain of the hunger that she's probably feeling. And so... Like I say, I mean, imagine five or six tortoises a day, and this is a smallish tortoise if she gets a really big one. It's a bit of a meal that's in there, and I know it's large majority of it is shell, but I suppose it is nutrients. So, B. Wilson, you're wondering if she's going to eat the shell or just the meat? Seems like she's just tucking into everything at the moment. I think she's just so ravenous. She's just trying to get in there and get as much as she can out of it. So she is eating little bits of shell, but most of it will be meat. I think she's breaking the shell with her canines and her incisors and then pulling chunks of meat. But let's listen because of just how much crunching is going on. So you see, she's opened it, and look now, she's trying to pull the flesh out. Shame, that poor tortoise. I'm sorry, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. sitting two meters from her and you can hear the crunching of that shell it's absolutely amazing the force that they've got to be able to break through that unusual prey that lions have been seen hunting. The kettle pot in the Kalahari Nature Reserve, it was a kettle pot that was hunted and absolutely destroyed by some lions the one year. But no, in terms of actual animals, um, just trying to think what they've been, I mean, they've, I've seen them go after everything. I mean, they chase ostriches, ground hornbills, um, I've seen them with Egyptian goose kills, I've seen them with vulture kills, um, they've chased hyenas, tortoises, pangolins, hard fox, pretty much anything you can think of, a lion will go after it, and I've seen lions eat pretty much everything. It wouldn't so shock me if they were eating that we get out here. Crocodiles, hippos, catfish, um, 
elephant, buffalo, obviously there's all the antelope species. I've seen them eating leopards before. Um, so pretty much anything's on the menu for a lion. Even if you go back to the Mopoko days, they used to even eat some of the lions that they killed. And in fact, even have done the same thing. So, you know, it's, it's, they, I think anything's on the menu for a lion. As long as it can crunch it down and swallow it, and they will take it, especially in a situation like this. A lioness that is in this kind of condition is going to not sort of turn its nose away at any nutrient. Um, you'll find that they'll go after pretty much anything that we have out here, from birds to tortoises, reptiles, uh, mammals, anything that's really is going to, to sustain them and, and keep them going. So nothing's off the menu, um, including humans. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that lions can go after, or certainly do go after regularly. Humans not so regularly. Humans not so regularly, yes. Well well said, Ferg. So every now and then, humans. Luckily, they are not uh, regular um, hunters of humans, particularly not in the Sabi Sands, because if they were, we would be in a lot of trouble here, Fergus. I don't know not even four meters from this lioness and so if she wanted to eat us it would be a hop skip and a junk jump and well Fergus and I would be no longer. It's a bit of a scary thought isn't it Fergus? No you look far tastier than me. Am I far tastier than you? Yeah. So so Fergus you're behind the camera at least you'll just throw the camera at her and I'm the I door I'm definitely in the firing line here buddy you've certainly <laughs> are far better off than I'll I am. Point. You'll just point exactly as long as you film it Fergus. <laughs> I don't want to be a situation where I die for nothing, at least if you film it, it will, it will be a situation where it will go viral or something, I don't know. <laughs> Let's not even think about those things because it's actually a bit macabre and I certainly don't want to think about that at all. If a lot of the car, that would go viral. Out of a car it would go viral, yes, we've done that already. We've ticked, we've ticked that box already, Fergus, falling out of a car, going viral, I've done that, you've seen that. So, on to the next thing at this stage. Now, Kirsty says she had a big chunky piece of meat. She did, didn't she? I wonder if she got maybe a leg or something out of that. It doesn't look like the biggest tortoise. I mean, I'm trying to see. It's not exactly like there's a lot of grass there, but I can't really see too much of this tortoise. But she certainly at least got something out of it. Is at least some nutrients, girl. Well done. Shame. You can see, look, look how she's trying to kind of get her canines. She can actually get in there and get all that's left. The crunching continues. First lady, you're wondering with a broken canine like she's got like that, would it affect suffocating prey? No, her canine is not broken enough. I mean, if you look at the Birmingham boys, you look at many other lionesses that I've seen in these areas, um, they've got broken canines all the way basically down to the jawbone where there's literally nothing there and they are still able to execute kills. What you might find is that they change their style of killing. So they go from instead of killing by suffocation, they might go and close the whole mouth and nose and just use the power of their jaws to keep that mouth shut. And that's how they suffocate um, rather than a situation where they you know, try and kind of go through the, for the throat, use those big canines. Um, but I mean, I've, I've seen many different lions with broken canines and none of them struggle in the killing department. The other three certainly will do the job. And her canines are still big, make no mistake. Even that broken one is still big enough to inflict some serious damage to you. I can promise you that. As you can see by that pushed tortoise, it has been absolutely mangled his jaws. And so she'll certainly be able to still execute a suffocation on an animal, that's for sure. Her condition is definitely due to the fact that she probably got beaten up uh, quite severely by the looks of things. And that's meant that either she's separated from her pride because she got beaten up, or she's had a real tough time keeping up with the pride, and that's led to her losing a bit of condition. Something about her reminds me of the sticks, though. I don't know what it is. It's just that maybe it's the dark black nose that she's got. I'm not sure. I mean, like I say, hopefully some of the guys that follow our lines regularly and know the spot patterns of the whiskers can help us out, but certainly there's something about her that is recognizable. And so while I try and think and rack my brain through some of the sticks photos that I have with me, 
Still no ID, unfortunately. It's the way it goes, though, sometimes, is that you find things and you're not really sure. It just seems as though, I don't know what happened between morning drive and now, but things have just kind of gone chaotic because we is here. She's still crunching on her tortoise. Ali's trying to track the Nkuma Pride, who seemed to have moved around. And Rickson's got tracks for apparently three or four lions at Twin Dams hunting buffalo. So that, who knows who they are and what they're doing there. So if there's tracks for three lionesses down there, or four lionesses, maybe six pride, that's down there. And then that means that this definitely is an interloper and somebody that we don't know. So, huh, interesting. That's, like I say, went from a quiet morning and we drove Twin Dams area. We had tracks for that male lion that went south there. But we didn't have any other tracks for anything else, so I'm not sure. Was that yummy, girl? I'm certainly licking your chops like it was good. All done. Shame. She's obviously enjoyed that meal. She's literally eaten everything, shell and all. I'm quite surprised. I honestly would not want to be her, though, in a few hours' time when that decides to come out the other end be comfortable. Shame girl, you're going to come past. You want me to move for you? And you can see how close she is and how tall she is in the sort of context of our car because she kind of comes up towards the sort of edge of the, the bonnet and that is as close as you will ever get to a lioness and she's literally probably almost rubbing up on the front of the car at the moment. Well, do you need me to move? She doesn't seem like she needs me to move. She's got space to go as well. It's not like I'm blocking her pathway. I'm just sniffing around. Is there maybe another little tortoise snack on the horizon here? No oh, shame. Struggling a little bit. I think those shoulder blades are really sore. I wouldn't be surprised she's got some major damage in those shoulder blades, and, and that's what's taking a bit of a toll on her. I know that I've seen a Salala male that had a completely disfigured spine from being attacked by another lion and he survived how I don't know He kind of walks with a hunch and it was all kind of crumpled up in similar bite wounds to what she's got on her back like and and The marks, but he was able to come right from it, but look shame her back legs are almost shaking a little bit I think she's a little weak unfortunately Always like I say it's Never really like seeing animals like this. It's sometimes can be a little hard, and it's always a, a little emotional when you see these things. I don't. It kind of doesn't sit right when you see an animal that's struggling. It's it's harsh, and it is nature, and it's part of what we do. But it never really gets easier, or ever feels okay when you kind of see these things. Now, Ferg is struggling with the sun, Ferg. So let me try and get you. No, don't stress, buddy. I'll, I've got to move anyway because she's mobile. But I've got to try delicately because how I got in here I'm not quite sure there we go so as I was saying it never really gets easier when you see animals like this and I know it's always part of life out here and it's something that I've seen many times but I never really enjoy it and kind of root for the animal always to come back from it and it's you know it's like the Mvula sighting it's you know, it's always good to celebrate the fact that an animal's gotten to an old age and it's a success that we've managed to see these animals go that way because it's a conservation and, and as an area we've obviously done right to protect them enough that they can live that long but it still doesn't change the fact that it kind of, it just feels a bit heavy when you watch a sighting like this when you see an animal that's just not in its best shape and clearly is uncomfortable and in, in no way really wants to be in the condition that it's in. It's obviously fighting to try and survive as much as it can. And that rings true for all of us, you know. A lot of us have difficulties in life, whether it be medically or anything like that, that we kind of fight for long periods to try and, you know, stay with, with it. And, it. and it's a tough thing to see, so I don't know. Like I say, maybe I'm just being a bit sobby today. What would the word be, Fergus? David, you say the Sticks girls all had signs of mange around knees and elbows and tummy areas, and so you don't think the Sticks girls? Well, David, I tend to agree with you on that regard. It's what I was saying earlier, is that it just doesn't kind of feel right for Sticks. It's quite a nice view, though. Sunlight and blue sky and greenery. Look at that. 
Hello, girl, and you're going to stop right there for us. That's pretty. She might be injured, but it's still something iconic about that picture, being lower than a lioness with blue sky and green grass. It's pretty, pretty incredible. Fergus? Uh, let's see, are we going to get up this bank? I think we're going to. Let's try. No, we're not going to get up there because there's a big stump that's hidden in there. So let's just try up slightly. Right, now I'm just going to try and get up into a better part. There was a big stump in there that stopped me from going up, so we're going to try this way. Try not to hit myself in the face with a branch. There we go. Well, we negotiated that okay. Now we just got to catch up with her and we're on a crash course for Treehouse Dam at the moment so that's where we're busy heading it. I think we can be quite lucky that we found her when we did because otherwise it would have been quite a tough track to find her here. I mean we obviously would have picked up the tracks crossing the road but it would have been not easy to track her all the way through this stuff. Quite fortunate that we actually saw her when we did. But the way that she's moving is she's now going deeper towards Stick's area. The old lioness in the sticks definitely had serious amounts of mange around the face area, the nose, so I don't think it's her at all. And the other sticks are not that old, so, I mean, not this condition old, so, I don't know. You never know. There's, lions can often be in the most random places at the most random times, like leopards. When they do sort of start to wonder a little bit, they can get themselves way out of their territory sometimes in the desperation to not but to maybe even rejoin the pride or something like that. I've once seen, you know, lions from this sector end up way down in the south of the Sabi Sands when kind of being isolated. So it does sometimes happen. What surprises me though is it's hot this afternoon and yet she's still striding and walking and going and there's just a bit of fight left in her still. So we shouldn't definitely not write this cat off. She's still going to try her very best to survive. Like I say, if it's tortoise by tortoise that gets her strength back up, then so be it. But it's going to take some time, I think, until she comes right. Um, a lot more hazardous driving in here than it was when I lost and it was so nice and dry in here. Um, Fergus, I'm just going to try to get around her a bit. got to watch out for stumps because since the grass is the stumps are a little bit less visible and we all know my track history with stumps in this area or in on Juma so let's rather try and avoid those this afternoon I don't think falling out next to her would be the best thing you see she's stopping and watching I'm pretty sure if she comes across anything that she can hunt she'll go after it in some respects, I kind of wish she finds these buffalo, just from a point of view that I hope that there's a calf there somewhere that she can grab and get a real solid meal out of it. The problem that I think she's got is that those buffalo, one, are probably strong enough to push her off any kill, two, the noise that that's going to make is going to most certainly attract the Nkuma prize. I look from where we are right now and we just shoot straight across and kind of onto the other side where it starts to ridge up a little bit. That's pretty much where the Inkuhumas are. So if she had to walk in a straight line east, she'd be walking straight to where the Inkuhuma Pride was seen this morning. So just up on that ridge there from where we are. It's not very far at all as the crow flies. Right, let me get ideas. I'm so much jabbering. I've left her drift quite far. That's okay. At least she's not like some of our leopards that we follow through here that can disappear in a heartbeat. So it seems as though she's far more visible. Her bigger size and also her slower movement than the likes of Hukumuri. Now I wonder which way the buffalo went because I believe they were chased west, which would be back towards us by those lines at Twin Dam. So I wonder if the buffalo Treehouse Dam at the moment could be a sign that they're there and maybe that's why she's walking in this way the whole afternoon she's listening and looking and trying to kind of see where they are now while I try and keep up with her through these thickets and see where she ends up it sends you back across to Ali who I believe has found some of the buffalo at Twin Dams 
Well, hopefully Ali will have some luck on Chitwa and maybe young Hosanna will be around. Wouldn't that be nice to see? But our cat is still mobile south and still going, is going towards Trias Dam now and from goes towards, well, Tundams and there's Buffalo there. So who knows how this is going to play out, but she's definitely moving and we're definitely going to stick with her as she goes because it'll be interesting to see where she's moving. What I've just said to Ferg though is that this lioness knows this property. This lioness has been here before. She is walking on the exact paths and coming out in the exact places. So I think she might be a Styx female. I honestly think it might be one of them that just doesn't look good at all. I know one of the small cubs I believe is, is no longer alive. So there's only three small cubs now instead of four. Um, and so I think it might be a Styx. Just the way she's walking is she's literally walking the exact path all the way through from Zoe, she's walked on the straight path to Triad. There's a suggestion that she's walked this area in her life. It's not like she's lost and wandering and pacing up and down. She certainly seems to know what she's doing and she's kind of moving in a way that would suggest that she's done this before. She's not like she's sniffing the ground. She's not in any way kind of looking around wild eyes as if to not know where she is. She's she knows what she's doing, so I think it's just one of the Styx girls that is not looking very good at all. But I might be wrong. Like I say, it would be interesting if maybe somebody can check it out for me. But certainly I think it might be one of the Styx girls that we've got here. Hopefully she t catches a nice drink at Treehouse. It's still a while away. We're going to take a while to get there. But hopefully she'll have a nice drink at her to get some water as well. After a long walk like this in hot afternoon sun, it'll be good for her to, to just get herself a nice meal. If it is a Styx girl, what she's doing up all the way coming from Zoe's power lines area, I don't know because that's a long way from here. Peter Panda, you say, what about a Salala? Uh, possible, but don't think so. There's one Salala lioness that is the tailed lioness that is older, that is apparently was looking really shoddy at one point possible I suppose I, I mean I don't know Lion, I find lions are a lot harder to ID than um, leopards I find lions you know for me it's tough to see the differences between them I've almost they've got to have some sort of unique thing for me to ID them quickly I, I won't lie it's, it's it's a lot harder for me to work out what's going on with lionesses than it is with leopards but I mean I could be a Salala I'm not sure anyone hashtag safari live if anyone has any other ideas as to who this could be the pictures i saw of the salala lioness though looked as though she was almost but done kathy you're wondering if she'd call out for her pride if she got to an area where she feels like they're close or she can smell them most certainly she'll start to and she'll have a situation where she'll try and give some sort of vocalization to rejoin i would be very sure of that um, but when she's just ambling like this and maybe feels like she's not quite in the area where her pride could be, then no, I don't think we'd see any sign of her calling. I think she's just trying to fly under the radar and rightly so. But like a painting though of this lioness walking down with kind of dappled lights, green clouds in the background. I think it looks very much like a bit of a painting as we kind of rolling forward with her. She's definitely looking to the right though. I wonder if she spotted something. See how she's looking right now. Well, Trias Dam is not the worst place for her to head. There's often a lot of water back here, a lot of impalas, and so there might be a chance for her to try a little hunting. I'm not sure. So, Jilly, wondering if lions can catch scrub hairs, they don't seem as agile as leopard. Well, Jilly, they can catch scrub hairs and, and in the past but yes they're not as agile as leopards and therefore a scrub hare hunt is a very very different story it's not easy for them to to go after scrub hares they you know it's also for the most part with lionesses what's the point you know there's at the end of the day there's more than normally multiple lions together and a scrub hare just really would only feed one if that so you know it's it's not really an animal to spend a lot of energy trying to hunt it's an animal that they would rather kind of if the opportunity presents itself and they can grab it sure but otherwise they're not really that interested in hunting them
Right, let's just see. Sorry, Fergus, that's my fault. I got into the frame there. There she goes. You can see she's a bit bandy in the way that she's walking. She's just stopping and looking around again. The good thing is she's walking into the wind as well, so the wind is not going to affect her movement or not going to give her presence away to any of the... So hopefully there's going to be a situation where if there's something lurking, she can at least have a fair crack at it. What's also on the horizon is rumbling of thunder and some rather ominous clouds towards the Kruger Park, so somebody is getting wet. Well, the more I look at this line, the more I think it might be one of the sticks, the, just the kind of look on her. I don't know, there's something that just says sticks to me and the way that she's moving and the way the property now suggests that it's her. But let's see, I mean, like I say, I'm sure somebody's going to be able to figure out who this lioness is. You can see she's just taking a break. I'm sure she's tired. It's been a long walk she's taken in rather warm weather, so I'm surprised she's walked as far as she has. If she had just pushed another 100 meters, she would have been at the water and could have had a nice drink and then a relax in the shade before she got there. But maybe she felt like she just needed to groom herself, get rid of all the tortoise blood that she's got. And look at that. That's a piercing stare that only the wild cats can have. It's just something about a wild animal's look. The cat, that is not what you see when you look at a wild animal in a zoo or in an enclosure or anything like that. These guys have something about them that when you look at them, they almost look as though they're kind of staring right through you and boring deep holes into the back of your head about them that just screams wild animals. So I always enjoy when you make eye contact like that. Now, shame, you can see she's salivating quite a bit. It's because she's panting so much because of the heat. So Sarah, are you wondering if she is a sticks with the Birmingham's protector if they find her? Well, you know, Birmingham's male lions are a funny thing. Theoretically, they would be probably quite interested and come and sniff her out. And if they worked out that she might potentially be a lioness they can mate with, then they certainly will just kind of walk around with her. She might find if she does come across males, she'll go into complete submissive mode. She'll probably flirt with them a bit and just treat herself as best as possible. So male lions are probably not her biggest threat. The Inkuma pride is what she's really got to worry about. The, the fact that there's five females there and just the one female here means that she's five on one is going to be very difficult for her to kind of carry on. Maybe she's not a stick, so I don't know. It's difficult. The ears are the only thing that's throwing me off as to her not being sticks is because those ears look massive. And the sticks females don't normally look like that. Okay, so she's going to walk towards us. So I'm going to roll back with her and just try and give her a nice wide berth. So I'm going to be quite far from her as she walks because I don't want to sit. She feels like I'm cutting her path off. So we're going to roll back nicely and keep her at a good distance away. I mean, so sometimes we might lose view of her, particularly there's going to be a nice big S bend now. So I do apologize if she goes out of shot for those S bends, but I don't want to be right up in her face. It's very cool to be able to drive with the lioness walking straight at you. So we don't want to push our luck too much and have a situation where we push her off the road. She's already having a tough time as it is. And so don't want to be those guys. Cat, you're wondering how internal conflicts start with There's very few internal conflicts that start in prides of females. Normally, though, if it does happen, it's all to do with availability of food and cubs. So there was a very strange interaction the other day of a lioness from the Kambula pride, which is where Mfumo has been spending most of his time down on Mala Mala, killed the cubs from another female, which is very odd. So that might have sparked a bit of kind of fight within the pride but otherwise generally there's not too much that goes on it's mostly food related when there's a little argument and a little tussle in amongst them but there we go so she's slowly coming along with us there's something epic about kind of just driving in a lioness right at you. you can't quite describe the feeling it's not something obviously that happens every day and certainly not something sorry Ferg that's me that's in the way it's not something that you get to do every single day so she's gonna go behind the bush I'm afraid sorry Fergus and also sorry for my head I'm trying to kind of see behind me as well as follow her now she might cut off shortly is right behind me here the dam's not far at all we're gonna go over a small bump and then the dam should be visible there's the bump that we've just gone over and then there's gonna be a game path off on my left hand side 
that's going to take us straight to the dam. So while she goes towards the dam, let's send you across to Ali, who's found another predator, but not a feline kind. Well, she is up and going. She's just coming to drink. So sorry, guys, we're just going through a very thick patch because we positioned ourselves absolutely perfectly. And then she had a situation where she kind of went behind us and decided that the smaller water hole is where she wanted to drink. So off of the water hole for Ferg. So, oh no, it's not working. There we go, Ferg. That's what you're going to deal with, I'm afraid. So that's the best that I can do for now, which hopefully is going to be good enough for Fergus in the long run. Fergus, is that okay? Okay. Is it okay? <laughs> or not? Not too bad. Not too bad. Considering where she parked us, I suppose I can a little bit more to the right so we can get her eyes. Hold on, Fergus. Go a little bit more to the right. I just wanted to just get the light on Fergus's side because it's always better when you've got a little bit of light action. It helps with what's going on. She's now turned her face completely away from us. Like I said, we had positioned ourselves because she was walking to the other side of the dam, and then all of a sudden she decided she's going to now move and come and sit here rather than actually position herself correctly, as we had discussed the water hole. So that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you just don't get it right, and you have a situation where the lioness does what she wants to do. Shame, my girl. Well, at least she had a good drink, I'm glad. But it shows you just how perceptive cats are, where they would rather drink from, very nice, Fergus, nice reflection, from a small little wallow than a big dam like this. So just, she saw that wallow and she thought, no, I'm not going anywhere near that. There's far too many things that lurk in big dams, and I'd rather drink from a smallish puddle. Right, carry on towards the south. I think she's going to go all the way. I think she's going to end up, Maybe even going into Little Gauri. I don't know. It's a long way, but she's walking it. Right, well, appears behind the mound, and I try and kind of catch up with her. It sends you back across to Ali, who's just arrived. Chit with them. She's found herself a little shady spot, and is just taking a bit of a break in the long grass, and she's deserved it, I suppose, for the afternoon. She's moved a lot. She's walked. She's obviously got her tortoise that she's eaten. So it's been a it's been a tough afternoon, probably a tough last couple of weeks, given what she seems to have endured over the little bit of those big wounds on her. Now, Katie, I believe you took some photos and compared them, and you reckon that it is one of the Styx lionesses. So, well, maybe that's it. So settled then. Which Styx lioness? I'm not quite sure, and why she's looking the condition she also have no idea, and what she's doing all the way where she came from also astounds me. I'm not 100% sure what's going on and why she's so far north. But I suppose the sticks used to travel that way. The sticks used to be seen regularly on Simambili, Arethusa, those areas. So I suppose anything is possible. But she found a little place to rest now. She's not far from where those buffalo and twin dams are. She's kind of slowly gathering her strength, I think, to push through and carry on there. But she's found herself a perfect spot just to relax for a bit. There goes a big yawn. So we know when they yawn like this that it means one of two things. Either she's going to get up and go again, or maybe she's going to just nap. And she thoroughly is and deserves a bit of a nap. It's, it can't be easy to drag yourself around when you've got very limited energy. So, you know, hopefully she's going to catch up with the rest of the pride. Hopefully they've caught a buffalo. If it is those lions that were hunting buffalo at Twin Dams, and that she can tuck in and get herself back into full fitness and out. Now, I wonder if maybe the one cub that's went missing, if that's got anything to do with these injuries. Maybe there was a little fight that ensued between some parties and she got in the middle of it and that's why she's got a few bite marks and cut marks on her tail and on her shoulder blades. It could explain what's happened. Although those shoulder blade marks, it does look like a puncture wound, particularly in the blade itself. I don't see a bone sticking out. I mean, there might be some sort of fur there, but I don't see any bone sticking out. So it looks like whatever got her, got her good and proper on both sides. It's definitely a, a gaping hole there. Whether or not that's from another lion, I can't be sure. Difficult to say. I mean, you know, it's on the back like she's been 
bit in there, although it doesn't look like holes from, you know, puncture wounds. It almost looks like scrapes. So I don't know what these wounds are. This definitely is healed quite nicely there. I suppose there is a nice puncture wound there. So it must have been from another lion that's caused these. You can see there, so they'll be kind of doing their thing and that's what she will be driving her a little bit mad. I'm sure flies landing on her and we can imagine how bad it must have been before this tissue granulated together and has formed a bit more of a kind of scab over it. At one point it must have been very raw and very uncomfortable. But it's been so long since we've seen the sticks that it's difficult to know that this was her and I hadn't heard anything about the sticks being in any way compromised or wounds on them or anything like that. So, you know, if it is one of them, what's happened to her is anyone's guess. Seems like it's been a hard summer all round for our big cats of Juma. There's certainly no shortage of drama. And also, the other thing that's happened is almost a, a weird coincidence. But I know some of you were commenting on, you know, that with, with the Mara being down for a few, for a little bit and, you know, things kind of not happening there that we were going to get less sightings of lions. And it seems as though since... James bid farewell yesterday. The lions have all just come back to Juma in a weird way. It's almost very strange. It's kind of just to reassure everybody that the lions of Juma are still around and they still will be present as we go forward. So hopefully they will kind of stick around. And it just shows you also how important buffalo are for our lion viewing. As soon as buffalo have arrived back, so the lions have started to become more and more visible on our area. With the lack of buffalo, it was just lions we're not going to find enough food to stay here as long as that they have in the past but now that we've got buffalo around you know these lions are going to start to spend more and more time in these areas so good to see the lions again it's always nice to have the biggest of the big cats on a juma mary is it true that when a lion yawns it's threatening so no that's completely false Lion yawning like that has got nothing to do with threatening behavior. A threat display from a lion would be baring its teeth. It would be ears growling, tail flicking. Those are threatening displays. Yawning is simply a way of a lioness getting more oxygen into the lungs, getting the blood to start flowing. It's often after they've been lying for long periods of time and it allows the blood to start circulating through and oxygen rich um, blood to go into the muscles that have been slept on and therefore stand up they can walk a lot easier you must remember that lions are often stiff when they stand up but the activity that they do have is often very physical so if they're hunting things like buffalo they do get stiff they do get sore and so you know there's these these muscles get tired and so when they yawn like that they're just getting that oxygen rich blood back into those muscles and prepping them for about to to start it's got nothing to do with the threat display. They are not in any way being threatening. You can see when she's yawning, if she was threatened or if there was something that was making her feel uncomfortable, she would direct it at it. And she doesn't yawn towards us. She just kind of yawns straight forward. And there certainly isn't anything in front of her that is causing her any stress. She's busy grooming herself and looking about. And so it's not a sign of any discomfort from her. It is completely natural to see cats yawn regularly. It's like if you've ever had a domestic cat at home, they yawn often and it's just part of of their daily business it's no way a threatening display at all look at that size of that paw it is absolutely massive right well our girl seems to be having a bit of a grooming session she's just kind of i think getting her strength back again and composing herself before maybe moving on and so while we sit with her and see whether or not she decides to sleep or carry on let's send you back across to ali who's still enjoying the beautiful late afternoon light and watching what's going on nice relaxed time of it and so are we it's quite nice just sitting in the company of her there's some european beaters that have been calling in the distance there's been a little bit of a breeze that's coming up now so it's very pleasant out here as well as the fact that the sun is just starting to set now and so we're getting this beautiful kind of golden tinge all around us oh there we go girl are you going to have fine up for the afternoon it's taken you a while you've been walking all afternoon so i'm surprised it took this long for you to sleep i would have thought you would have started waking up now rather than sleeping but you never know maybe she knows she's in earshot of those buffalo and she's just sitting tight now and having a bit of a rest
Lily, you're asking why does the skin look black in places? Is that from mange? So Lily, no, probably not. Um, the places where it looks very black, particularly on the shoulder areas, is where there's scars. So that's where her skin has been cut. And then when the skin has come back together to heal, make sure that that area is no longer damaged, then you find that the situation, the skin comes back black like that before the fur can sometimes grow back. And so that's just the skin color that you're seeing. And it's, it's like if you cut yourself and you have a bit of blood, then it does dry quite dark in color. And so it's the same thing for this lioness. Those are just she's wearing at the moment. So her skin is a little lighter than that if you had to shave her, but those are from where she's been hurt, unfortunately. But you can see there's the nasty little bite wound on her back. And she scratched it just now and it leaked a whole bunch of fluid. You can actually see that her fur is now matted from liquid that came out. So there's a bit of blood that came out, some other stuff. And so it's good. That's what she needs to do. She needs to keep cleaning it, keep making sure that she kind of keeps all that stuff coming out. Really fantastic, you say you hope she's not lonely. Well, I'm sure she's a little lonely. I'm sure she's in a situation where she wants to obviously be back with her pride. It would be far better for her condition, far better for her to find food, to find her pride again. So I'm sure she is a little lonely. But whether or not to stop her, is anyone, it's not going to. She's going to still have that strong instinct to survive. And hopefully she will rejoin with her pride and everything will start to look a lot healthier and better for her like i said i've seen lionesses in worse condition than this that have survived so you know she's still got a chance nancy wondering if a lion can survive without a proud pride not proud pride i'll get it out eventually but um yes they can so i have seen single lionesses survive without prides um it's possible they just have to readjust their technique um if they're very healthy then it's a lot easier and lioness like this it becomes harder and her to be on her own if she if she was fit and healthy then yes she could survive on impalas and those kind of things but where the way she is now it's going to be very difficult for her to be as agile enough to grab those faster fleet-footed impalas and and dikers and steenboks and those kind of antelope that we see here but most certainly lionesses can survive on their own they are incredibly cunning creatures and they're just the targets that they go after and you know things like buffalo go out the window a little bit they're just not strong enough to go after big herds of buffalo so they'll have to kind of rather focus on antelope species but certainly is very possible and there's been a number of lionesses through history and through these games that have survived by themselves for long periods of time there was a lioness down in the sabi sands that i think spent more time by herself than with her pride in the southern pride there was a lioness called floppy yeah she used to often be on her own for weeks and months and be absolutely fine and physically probably was the biggest and strongest of the entire pride so you know depends on the condition that they're in when they go off on their own but must remember a lot of them also raise cubs by themselves and so it takes a long time to get back and forth from the pride and sometimes you know it's three four five six seven days until they rejoin the pride with suckling cubs and those kind of things and they have to sustain themselves then so it is very much possible now interestingly enough while we're sitting here i can see some rather nasty clouds developing. she's lying at the moment just above her there is a big cumulonimbus cloud that is coming through it's right on the horizon behind that tree that big knob thorn that is there so there you can see that cloud that is looking quite ominous now we know it's a cumulonimbus because they get this very kind of anvil shape to them and that moving fast it's starting to blow in towards us it's been shifting across the horizon and i'm pretty sure that's the one that's causing the rumblings on the distance and somebody is getting a lot of rain from that particular cloud now kirsty says to me that rain is predicted until thursday well kirsty i think some tonight it looks certainly like there is a big storm on its way and the wind has all of a sudden started to kick up a little bit and the wind is quite cold which is sometimes a bit of a nerve-wracking thing because when wind gets cold after a hot day it can often be an indication that hail is around and so hopefully we're not going to get any hail falling down because hail is the worst things to have out here it absolutely strips an area of all its leaves, hammers the grass, kills birds, kills all kinds of things. So hopefully we're not going to get huge amounts of hail. And if it is hailing, hopefully it's not anywhere where we are because, well, the damage that can be pretty nasty. So 
Let's hope that cloud decides not to drop hail on us. It's welcome to drop lots of rain, but hail is a no-no. But our lioness, I think, finally is going to have a really deep sleep. I don't know how much she's going to move around from now, but she's probably going to have a good rest. So we'll stick around with her because we close that anything could happen if especially if the buffalo move this way and so while we kind of be patient and see what she gets up to let's send you back across to Ali who's left Chitra Dam and I think maybe she's going to be coming back towards Juma and the Inkuma Bride. Well hopefully Ali will avoid the gremlins and all will be okay. What I can tell you is that we're sitting here and I can hear those buffalo are coming but surely they can hear them just in the distance she popped her head up just now when there was a bit of a rumble from one of them she doesn't seem at all interested in hunting them because you'd have a situation where she would have probably moved towards them as soon as she heard them but there's definitely audio of buffalo it's not right here and i certainly can't see anything but it seems we are getting into a situation where maybe, just maybe, the buffalo might start approaching. They're coming, the sound is coming from that direction over there. It's quite dense and thick in that direction, so I can't see anything. Ferg, can you spot anything from there? Ferg's got a bit more height than I do, so maybe he can see something. Is there something through that side? No, no, it's just the... Is that a buffalo on the edge there? No, it doesn't look like it. Can you hear them, though? Ferg, I'm not going crazy, am I? No, so it's like our wild dog story the other day. It's in the exact same place as well where we couldn't find the wild dog But definitely sounds like buffalo coming towards us now. I think this poor a Very very bad day if buffalo head in this direction She's going to not have it easy at all because I don't think she's capable of hunting them And if they see her and smell her they definitely her and it's not very pleasant for her. She might find that she's going to unfortunately have to get up into a tree, which sometimes does happen if they get surrounded. But we'll see how it plays out. We've still got quite a bit of time, and it sounds like the buffalo and when they're grazing and moving just before sunset, buffalo do cover quite a bit of ground, and so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm also interested to see if the Inkahumas hear it and maybe stand up and start walking this way because that's certainly going to throw another spanner in the works altogether. Now, I believe that people who's pretty good with our lions and it certainly often provides us with great information as to you know the lions and how things go and it's always very much appreciated it says that he's not sure sticks lioness he says he's looked at the photos not 100 percent sure about the eye color that doesn't look quite right and so who knows who this lioness is, is at the moment I, I mean i don't know like i say i i've absolutely not the foggiest it, it reminds me of the sticks but i'm not 100 percent sure at all so, Crystal, you think it might be the Mbiri lioness. Mbiri is a pride that comes out of the Manuleti, and, and Mbiri means two. I mean, so I don't know if there was two lionesses in that pride, and that's why they got the name. But Mbiri pride lioness, it's possible. Um, there's also another pride that was here a few months ago. So, I'm not sure. Crystal, you say on the 13th of Feb she was seen badly injured. Do you know where those injuries were, Crystal? Or does it, did it not say or show pictures? Because it would be interesting to know. Because if it's on her back and her shoulder blade, it could very well be her. But the audio for that buffalo is starting to get stronger and stronger and stronger. I can hear them more and more and more coming in our direction. So what well, sounds like it's... Ferg, do you think they're coming in our direction? sounds like it is, don't you think? I'm just trying to scan and see them. It's difficult here because we're quite sort of surrounded by bush willows, and bush willows are quite dense and thick. It's also starting to get dark now. The, the sun is setting, and so it's becoming quite difficult to make out greens from. And in terms of, you know, buffalo, they often are, you know, they're quite dark in coloration. So I don't see anything for now, but we'll just keep an eye out there. I'm sure if they're going to come, they're going to direction so that's exactly where twin dams is, is is that side and through those thickets and so hopefully they do come this way like i say i mean i would i don't want anything to happen to this poor girl i don't want her to get hurt in any way but it would be nice if she could find herself a meal wouldn't it i think so i think she could find herself a little buffalo i know a little buffalo calf has still got lots of way to go in life and it's not ideal for a little baby to be killed but i don't see her down a buffalo bull or a buffalo female in a herd and so a calf is her only option if it comes to hunting but you can see that ear is working so even though she's sleeping her ear is still picking up the sounds and she'll be very aware that buffalo are heading in this direction and i hope that she doesn't get caught unawares i'm sure she won't be i'm sure she'll have a situation where she'll 
position herself nicely. And it's crazy to think that we're in a situation where normally when we're on Juma and we see lions, we wish for buffalo to be around and we know that as soon as a buffalo makes a noise anywhere in the vicinity of lions they normally go after them in this area but things are different today and it's almost like the hunter is becoming the hunted in a way because these buffalo like i say if they see her they have a problem with her that's for sure the other thing that's lucky for her though is that the wind is coming from the buffalo towards her and not the other way around so they're not going to smell her before they see her which means that maybe she will escape and get out a very nice Ferg, some digitera grass, so finger grass. So you're showing the wind. Well done, Fergus. He's very artistic. So wild dogs came across her with their attacker. No. <laughs> wild dogs are petrified of lions. If they see her, they are gone in the other direction as quick as possible. So even in her weakened state, she'd be able to dispatch a wild dog. She's just physically so much bigger and even test it all, it would almost be like that tortoise that we just saw having a very bad day. Well, in fact, I suppose that's not a very bad day, that is the worst day you could have. So, certainly nowhere near a lioness, they're going to see her and run the complete opposite direction. Hyenas, very different story. Hyenas find this lioness, they will go after her and they will come at her and they will try their luck and they will and sort of push her around and harass her and she could potentially get very badly injured from hyenas. In fact, these wounds that we see here could well be from the fact that she's got bite wounds on her tail. It's often a place where hyenas do go for lions and so it's very, very possible that that's what's happened to her. I don't know. I, I surmise though that it's more another cause this. I know in the Manuleti, if it is one of the Mbiri females, the Manuleti has had also, lots of kind of movement of lions and lots of conflict up there. So, very possible that it could have been other lions or even hyenas as well. But she's very sleepy now. It's amazing. Walked through the hottest part of the day. Now that it's cool, she's lying down. I would have thought that it's cool she would have to keep going. And I'm interested if she's not a Styx why is she moving in this direction? Is it because she's just been hearing the buffalo all day and she just wants to run and try and get herself a meal? Is it because she just doesn't know where else to go? I mean, I just, it baffles me that she's walking the way she's walking. And also what is interesting with her is that she knows which way. She literally went onto every single game path that led her directly to Trials Dam, that led her directly to sort of this point here. This is, she's just come off a big game path that walks here. And it's the same game path the Inkahumas use, I've seen the sticks use it, and I've seen a number of our leopards use this game path. So, how she knows about it, is anyone's guess. Who knows what the situation is with her and how she kind of it, but maybe they're a little smarter than we are and they're far more kind of aware of their environment than what we think. Anyway, we're going to sit, hope that the buffalo make an appearance fairly short. And while we sit and wait for them, let's go back across to Ali, who's just having a little bumble in the beautiful bush. And it sounded like the buffalo maybe a little closer than we thought. I can't see them, but she certainly popped her head up and started walking straight in that direction. So she's definitely heading towards where the noises are coming from. Whether or not she's going to try and hunt them, I don't know. But she's done some damage to her tail because she's licked it and groomed it so much that its blood is pouring. What a beautiful sky there is on the horizon. Look at that with the lioness walking through and those pink and blues. That is very pretty. That's something straight out of a book really. You can't ask for a sky than that ominous but pretty. That's for sure. So let's keep up with her though because I, if the buffalo are around here we want to be quite close because it's going to be a situation where it's going to be at close quarters battle. That's for sure. It's thick in here and so everybody's going to get nice and close before they realize where each party is. I still don't see any buffalo. I'm scanning as much as I can. She's with intent down to that area. So I wonder if she's really considering going after a buffalo. This is quite interesting. Would have thought she would have shied away from the confrontation of a herd, but maybe hunger is driving her to try her luck. Still no buffalo that I can see. I just wanted to scan around as we go as well, just to check. Get for your head, Jeff. Are we good? Fine, which is important. Got to make sure that the camera is always in good condition. Please don't go into this thicket, though. Uh, guess where are we going? 
we're going into the place where I fell out the car and Fergus got thrown into the camera. I think let's be careful, Fergus. Let's not do that again. Imagine falling out between lions and buffalo. Yeah, let's not do that. I've seen somebody actually fall off a car twice from lions and buffalo. So it's actually what you would want to do. In fact, the one guy was saved by, well, one tracker was saved by his ranger when he fell out right next to a pride of lions on top of a buffalo. Luckily, they were so busy looking at the buffalo and so busy trying to use, eat the buffalo that they forgot completely that somebody went thump right next to them and they kind of let it go. So it's interesting to see how that went down, but I don't think I would want a repeat performance of that any time soon. Look, she's stopping and listening. Now, that's where I think the buffalo are in this little thicket. See, look, she's definitely intent on something. I still don't see any buffalo. I can't hear them. If we were very close, we would hear them. The I can't hear that at the moment. She, oh, she's stopping and listening. All right, let's keep up with her. Let's see. The good thing is we're going to be on the road, so we're not going to attract too much attention to her because buffalo are be used to us being on the road, but they're not very used to us kind of bashing through the thickets. So they'll pop their heads up if we're on the thickets, but saying that I need to put my seat belt on. Do you have a seat belt, Fergus? Do you have a bungee cable? Put me in. Well, actually, let's not use bungee cables. Bungee cables seem to be dangerous for the crew. Who got hit in the face? James and? Somebody else also got hit. Wait, did you get hit, Fergus? Cross fingers, exactly. Brent is the other one that got smacked in the head. What if I... To admit it, that sounds just like Brent Leo Smith, just like he didn't get stuck in the Masai Mara and is not part of the Mash Marshmallow Club. Like deceit, he did get stuck. Kirsty has the photos to prove it, and we've all seen them. Hey, Kirsty. Brent Leo Smith is definitely. He is actually the founding member. He was the founding member of the Marshmallow Club, but he doesn't want to tell anybody that that's what happened, but he is. He's Lord Marshmallow. <laughs> Do you think he'll like it if I call him Lord Marshmallow when he gets back? It's going to be a long time, so I'll have to remember Lord Marshmallow, but for now, I think we should call him Lord Marshmallow. It would be good. And then Taylor's Queen Marshmallow, and... Yes, the viewers, all of you will remind me about Lord Marshmallow and his... little incident where he got... In fact, Chris, I haven't even got photos of this. Have these been shared? Did anyone actually see him get stuck and share it live? No, they haven't, have they? So I think what I'm going to do is, while you look at the lioness walking down the road, I think I'm going to try and find see if I can see where Sprint got stuck. Because he always has a lot to say about everybody else getting stuck, but never has he shown himself being stuck. Look at this. Here we go. Is that Ralph? Who's that? Now, I'm not sure who it is, but I've got to try and find Brent Jacking. Yes, that is Brent Jacking. So we even have a bit of video action. So, no. Brent's been stuck now. Look, she's stopping. Okay, let's get into videos about Brent getting stuck later because this lioness is getting more and more serious. Her body posture, the way that she's moving, is that of a is watching what's going on. Now, I know she's lying on the road, but she's stopping. She was listening. She got her head much lower. There goes a scrub hair in the background. So if you're wondering whether they hunt scrub hairs, there's a scrub hair moving in that direction. Let's stop right here because this will be able to then see if the buffalo start making their way. Like I say, the good news for her is that the wind is blowing perfectly because the scent of those buffalo will be drifting towards her rather than her scent sending towards the buffalo. Now, I believe Ad of the buffalo, and I'm interested to know exactly where she is, but let's send you across there so she can give us an update of just how far those buffalo are from Twin Dams. Well, I'm not very far at all, Ali. I can hear your buffalo, and you are just to the south of where we are, so... Alley is no more than 200 meters down this road. If you look where this lioness is, there's a tall tree directly behind her in the distance there. So straight down the road there to the left, and that's basically roughly where Alley is, at one of those big tall trees on that horizon section there. So it's not far at all, and hopefully the lioness is going to head there. You can see she every now and then turns her head and 
that direction. I think she's wondering whether the buffalo are going to come to her or if she's going to actually have to go. But isn't that a beautiful picture? I know it's kind of quite dark, but there's this beautiful color in the sky. The road itself has almost got a sort of purple tinge to it. And then the sort of blues of the oncoming and a bit of a breeze. Are you going to go flat now? Oh, girl. No. No hunt just yet, but I wonder if the buffalo maybe makes some more noise if she might head this way. And also, I think it's going to turn and come back up the road for her to do anything. If they go south into Little Gauri, of course, obviously, this is all going to be very difficult for us. But we'll stay with it for a while and see what's going to happen. I mean, we've followed her all afternoon. We might as well commit and just keep going with her and see what she gets up to. Uh, I don't know to hunt these buffalo it's more maybe just a situation that she heard them and she'd rather be in a space where she can see them coming than being caught off guard in a thicket i mean i don't it's obviously a difficult thing to to sort of know but she's certainly kind of not that interested at the moment and doesn't really look like she wants to be hunting that's for sure if it was a lioness that wanted to hunt she would have heard those buffalo and really would have been committed to it by now it's a pity that in Kuma Pride we're not as close to these buffalo as what she was because that would have definitely meant some hunting would have taken place. I wonder if she get up and move. Seems as though she's still very quiet for now. And like I said, the wind is kind of coming from those buffalo, so she knows they're there. I mean, she's been listening, she's been looking in the direction, so she knows the buffalo are there. I think it's just a situation where she just doesn't have the strength to hunt them. And so for now, I'm going to take it easy and just sit and then let's see what happens from there. Maybe she's going to catch her breath for a little bit and if the buffalo grunt and make some more noise, maybe she'll head in that direction again. Interesting though. It's strange that we've just got another different cat around. Heidi, good to have the buffalo back. It is. I mean, this is a huge part of the ecosystem here. I mean, they disappear like they did in the last year. It, it certainly leaves a big hole and a big gap. Oh, there's some impala. You see them just ahead of her there, Ferg? Just on the edge of the tree line. Is that impala? Yes, it is impalas that are just coming out. That's far more suitable than a buffalo, except that she's lying right in the middle of the road, and so she's got no chance to hunt those if she stays where she is. But the buffalo being back is great. It's it's It creates a whole different obviously good for our ecosystem in that they are grazing again they are dropping fertilizer in the form of their dung all over the place it brings a lot onto this area it, it makes everything kind of a little bit more balanced and so it really is good to see them i think we're going to have another year though where we're not going to have too many buffalo in the winter it's going to be another dry time I'm sure we're going to see too many buffalo at this stage we're only seeing really one herd by the looks of things that keeps coming through it doesn't look like we've got multiple different herds in the area it looks like this individual herd that's coming and so i don't really know how many buffalo are going to be around i know there's a lot of buffalo to the south of us along the crocodile river and maybe if they exhaust their resources we might have a situation where they come up this way that's quite cool to see the impalas in the far in our lioness on the left you can see she hasn't seen them the impalas haven't seen her what's going to interest me is whether or not those impalas start shouting is that going to drive up is that going to make the buffalo a little bit more nervous bunny you say i wake up tristan i'm awake i'm with it i spotted those impalas like a ninja i was <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay, so I'm just playing around. So I know that Bonnie meant I must wake her up and get her to attention, but I was just playing around and having a little bit of a joke. But hopefully she does wake up, although the Impalas seem as though they have far more awake to what's going on, and one is looking in this direction, although it hasn't seen her. It tells me is that sometimes these animals, like the Impalas, who have got such keen eyesight, can look at a lioness lying in the middle of the road and not see her. Just because she's lying flat, they don't see her. They just don't do anything. But if that lioness was up and standing, you would have found that those impalas would have been onto her like a flash. You can see the impalas are looking in our direction, but they have no There's a lioness lying here. It could also be the angle. So if you look from where those impalas are and you come along the road, there's a little bump in the road. This lioness is being obscured by that bump in the middle between these impalas and the lioness itself. Girl, you need to wake up. There's some food over. Not that she has much of a shot from where she is. She's so exposed at the moment that she'll never get into a bush without those impalas noticing her. And the impalas would have had to walk straight before she would have been able to 
to grab one of them. So I don't think she's got much of a chance here. It's, it's quite a distance, even for a cheetah, this would be extreme edge of where they would start running from. Right, let's see how this lioness goes. Maybe she wakes up, maybe she sees these impalas. Hopefully the impala males start clattering their horns together and that they're here. And while we wait for that to happen, let's have a quick jump to Ali and see whether or not those buffalo are still hanging around the place. Well, the lioness has been spotted, I think, because this has been shouting and snorting away and our lioness has not cared in the slightest there you go you can hear her snorting or him snorting should i say it's not to her i'm sorry boy i do but she's not really too faced she lifted her head slightly looked at the impala and then flopped back down again so not too worried the thing is though alarm calls like this could very attract the Inkuma pride and that's the last thing that this lioness needs if she's already had a run-in with other lions which it sounds like she is from the Imbiri pride so a few of you have checked photos and and blogs and various things about this Imbiri pride female that got hurt and it sounds like this is her so I believe some 90% sure that it is her which is good news and um, so she the last thing she needs is to to be able to run into another pride she really Way from other lines as much as possible and coming this far south is very interesting I don't think the Imbiri pride has been seen in the Sabi sands has it I'm not sure I don't even know it's the first time that I've heard of them into Juma and the time that I've been in the northern Sabi sands so I'm not sure if anybody else has ever heard of them being seen I just spoke to Rexon about it now because he asked me on the radio it out who it was because he wasn't sure when he came into the sighting and he I told him in Beery Pride and he said oh he's not seen those lionesses before so I don't think they have been in the area and if they have they've been confused with other lionesses that's for sure I would like to know a little bit more about the Beery Pride so if anybody's got information about it hashtag Safari Live how many lionesses in the Pride what's the story how did what what kind of led to her being on the southern boundary of Juma at this time and you know what's their usual haunt to that manuleti southern manuleti and what their kind of story is i would like to know it's always interesting just to gather some information about these prides i'm sure many of you do have lots to to say and, and beery means two so i would imagine that there was it came from a time when there must have just been two lionesses that's what i would think is the situation and so i don't know maybe some of you can can give me a bit of a a shout as to what exactly happened and how it all played out as to why she's here. <laughs> so Aiden, who's six years old, Aiden, I like the way you think and I could do what you're asking to do but unfortunately I'm fresh out of cheeseburgers to leave her tonight. I don't have any. Fergus ate them all this afternoon. Fer bit of a glut in the back and so Fergus ate all of the cheeseburgers that we packed for lunch today. Fergus why did you eat all the cheeseburgers? There's a lioness that's <laughs> No so Aiden unfortunately a cheeseburger wouldn't be actually very good for her. The, the bun and the cheese is not good but if we did have for her that would not be good as well because it would be interfering in nature. Now what interfering means Aiden is it means that we are changing the way that nature going and playing out and the system that we're in here is a very large one and it's big and there's lots of animals here and so what the decision is is that the animals need to live by themselves as they so we are trying not to influence what goes on which means we're trying not to change how the animals react and even though this lioness is very if we feed her something we would have had to have killed another animal which is not fair on that animal to be able to feed her and we don't know if she's going to be able to come back herself you, you never know she might go tonight Aiden and she might be getting all the food she needs and that buffalo was a sick weak buffalo that needed to be removed from the system because it didn't it wasn't able to handle proper nature the animals that die and that are killed are animals that are not strong enough to survive and it's important that those animals die because the strongest animals must survive for the or, or the type of animal that they are to go forward in and, and to be able to be stronger and better and to be able to survive for longer periods so us feeding would be unfair on the animal that we had to kill to to feed her and also would be unfair on the system itself because then if I feed her why am I not going to go and feed that skinny or a impala that died that we saw 
yes, this morning that was being eaten by vultures. So just because it's a lion, we can't go and feed it. We need to try and apply a, a rule to all of them treat the animals that if we've hurt them as people then we try and look after them but if we haven't hurt them as people and it's something that has happened in the natural world so another lion or hyenas then you know she has to try and survive from that and if she's strong enough to survive from that then she's got really good genes and the whole lion world is going to benefit because she's going to be passing on these very strong genes that she has by having little cubs maybe after she recovers from this so it's important that we don't interfere too much and we don't try and change what goes on. But I like the cheeseburger idea, and like I say, if my naughty friend Fergus didn't eat them all, we might have considered it. She could have a um, impala burger between two bunnies. Um, impala burger between two bunnies? Yes, I suppose that would be pretty good. I'm sure she wouldn't mind two bunnies on top of an impala, or on the bottom and top of an impala. I'm sure she would get them down quite quickly. Tortoise burger, she already tried. The shell was a bit crunchy. Do we call it a... Is it maybe a tortoise nacho? Mm, yes, tortoise familiar. nacho maybe. Right, anyway, we're going to sit here with her while she's got her head up and kind of facing down the road. And while we do that, let's send you back across to Ali. And I wonder if Ali's not close to Janet Jackson's hole, that she might have a little look.